Mid Journey just got updated to version 6 and it might be the biggest update yet. Every part of it got improved and some tricks that you knew won't work anymore. So watch this video to find out what Mid Journey V6 can really do. The alpha version of the model became available December 21st to all users. The list of improvements may not look very long, but trust me, it is huge. The biggest thing for me is by far the ability to generate text and I will surely test it all out. There are two ways to access the updated model. The first one is by adding dash dash v6 to your prompt. However, there is a catch. If you type v6 without a space between the two symbols, it will not work. The correct way of inputting is by typing dash dash v space 6. And would you look at that? Here are the four images of a happy puppy eating a snack. I can't say that the images look perfect, but at least they are accurate enough in depiction of the dogs. The snack in their mouths, however, is either non-existent or all crooked. But hey, that's mid-journey right there. Personally, I think there is absolutely no reason to do things this way. Why would you ever need to use the old model if the new one is available. So the better way is to type in settings and in the drop down menu, switch the model from the default one to V6 alpha. Now let me show you how cool this text generation is. And for it, I'm going to use the suggested prompt from MJ developers, MJ. My journey, you get it. So imagine the photo of the text hello world written with a marker and a sticky note AR 16 by nine. In this prompt, we can already see two important things. One, all text should be in quotes. If you use other quotes than these ones, it will not work. Second, AR 16 by nine is used to specify the aspect ratio of the generated images. Now let's look at the images themselves. Surprisingly, the text on all four is correctly spelled. Spelled, you will see in today's video that this is not very common for Midjourney to correctly spell everything on the first try. But here, with this simple text, everything looks okay. The style of all images is different and I can't really pinpoint my favorite one. H has its own charm. Be sure to tell me which one you like more in the comments. Another big improvement done to Midjourney is more accurate prompt following and accepting longer prompts. So let's test that. Here I have a really long prompt that sets the stage of a bustling medieval marketplace. In the prompt, I describe various elements like fruit vendor, storyteller, blacksmith, details in the background and in the foreground. There are a lot of things happening in this prompt, but can MJ really deliver? And while it is generating, let me quickly quote some of the changes taken straight from the press release. Prompting with V6 is significantly different than V5. You will need to relearn how to prompt. This sounds like a big change, but as of right now, I don't see any substantial difference. Previous versions of MJ weren't exactly accurate or were convenient to use, so I don't really have a lot of expectations towards this newer version. Midjourney V6 is much more sensitive to your prompt. Avoid junk like award-winning, photorealistic 4K, 8K. Personally, I think this is a good change because before I saw many people using these nonsense words and resolutions, hoping to improve the results without realizing that MJ generally generates all images in roughly the same resolution. And the only way to make the images clearer is to upscale them. And by the way, recently we made a really good video about AI upscalers, so be sure to check it out. So the image is done generating and it does really look like what I have asked for. However, only one of these images depicts the scene somewhat correctly. So I will just click here to upscale the image number two. And here I have two options for upscaling, subtle and creative. Let's try them both. And while the image gets upscaled, let's look at it. Right off the bat, I can see that the general idea is preserved accurately. There is a fruit vendor, a storyteller, someone on the ground listening to the story and even someone who resembles blacksmith. However, there are almost no details, making it almost impossible to say what is what. Now let's jump straight to the upscaled images. Creative upscaling, here I see a really good result. It is not perfect, but much better than what we had before. The faces of some characters look more like faces, but some things like this dog 
are completely unrecognizable. But again, this is much better and even the blacksmith looks like a proper blacksmith. At least if I squint my eyes, I could guess that. <laughs> as for the subtle upscaling, it looks just as bad as the original image. Maybe the clarity has improved, but in terms of recognizing what is what, it is still just as bad. So I recommend using creative upscaling and according to developers, it gives up to two times higher resolution results. Before I do more testing, I want to mention a few things about this update that the community has found. New prompt length is now over 350 words. We can specify colors and other details, place things where we want them, prompt for more than one subject, and talk to MJ like it's ChatGPT. Right now I cannot confirm nor deny this, but I think the next test can shed some light. I'm going to ask MJ to generate an image of three best friends of different ethnicities and in specific clothing. This sounds like a pretty simple request, and it is. However, once again, only one image out of four complies with all the requirements. Only in one of them, the ethnicities are correctly shown, and the clothing is somewhat similar to what I was expecting to see. So I will take image number three and generate variations of it. And now all four images look really nice. It's far from the quality of a real photo, but definitely more than you would expect. Now let me tell you about Pipio, the sponsor of today's video. Pipio is a very cool platform for painless video production. Hiring an actor, feeding him, renting a studio, who wants all that hassle? With Pipio, creating high quality videos becomes as easy as hitting a button. For example, if you need a marketing video, a sign up email, a video ad, product demo, or a video newsletter, you can now do it like this. First, select your digital actor, browse through Pipio's vast collection of one of a kind avatars to find the perfect one to represent your message. Each actor brings their own personality and charisma to the screen and next, choose a voice that you like. Whether you're seeking a friendly, professional or authoritative tone, you are sure to find the perfect match. The library of voices is quite vast and regardless of your needs, finding the suitable one is an easy task. Then simply add and adjust your script in real time to bring your digital actor to life. No more retakes or time-consuming editing, PPO makes it super easy to create compelling videos and voiceovers in minutes, hassle-free. To make the videos even more unique, you can add custom backgrounds, speech bubbles, visual effects, music, and so on. And if you want to edit the video further, with PPO, it's super easy to export the video, voiceover, and digital actors directly to your favorite editing software. PPO is a one-stop solution for creating personalized videos. I think this service would be especially useful not only to marketing departments, but also to businesses. Video webinars, corporate memos, training videos, employee and client onboarding, all this now takes mere minutes to create. So if your employees don't read the newsletter or presentations, such a digital actor could make the material more personal and interesting. Or let's say you want to teach something, but you are too shy to show your face. With PPO, you can create tutorial and explainer videos, online courses, presentations and lectures, interactive learning materials in a couple of minutes, all with personality and character. And here is the best part. Pipio will be available for 72 hours on the AppSumo flash sale, so don't miss out on your chance and hit the link below to check the offer out. As for the next one, I think we should properly test all these new arguments that MJ now supports. The initial prompt will be super simple. A boy is in a parking lot holding the car keys, but there are no cars nearby. This prompt should test how well MJ V6 can understand negatives. And only if MJ can truly understand what I'm asking for, the images will have no cars in them. For the first argument, I will use the well-known aspect ratio and set it to four by three. All four generated images look stylistically very different, and only in one of them there are no cars. That's what I don't like about MJ. It rarely gets stuff right. Stylistically, the generated images look okay, but I feel like Dolly and Adobe Firefly would have done a better job here, at least in terms of sticking to what I'm asking for. The second added argument is chaos. It is a parameter that requires you to type in the number. If you leave it blank, MJ will not generate a thing. There's no given scale for chaos, so I think 
think I will set mine to five. And from what I see, this argument basically randomizes the output, the style, artwork, and so on. And again, only one image fully complies with my initial request. The next interesting argument is weird. Let's not beat around the bush and set it to 100 straight away. And the results are, well, I can't really call them weird, but they are surely strange at best. Now the response is even more chaotic than before. The art style on two images is very cartoon-ish and on the other two, pretty realistic. However, all four images have cars in them, which shows that MJ cannot properly understand the request. So if you decided to give it a list of things that shouldn't be in the final image, it would be much easier to just not mention them at all and hope for the best. Another interesting argument is stylized, but it works totally differently from how you expect. You cannot just type in this argument and the style afterwards. I tried it with anime style, no luck. This argument is number based and can range from zero to 1000. Here's what developers say about it. Lower values of stylize may have better prompt understanding, while higher values may have better aesthetics. From my testing, it seems like if you don't mention a particular style in the prompt itself and just max out the argument, MJ will generate something that either looks realistic or super well drawn. For example, out of these four images, I like the bottom left one the best. Yes, it doesn't really align with the initial prompt, but it looks like there is something that resembles text. So out of curiosity, I will take this image and upscale it creatively. And the result is different. The art style is still there, but some elements got worse. The text is totally illegible now, and the hands are super weird. Another argument to try is style raw. Here's what devs say. If you want something more photographic, less opinionated, more literal, you should probably default to using style raw. And at no surprise, as soon as I use this parameter, I basically get photographs. Not perfect, but super photorealistic. For example, the boy in the bottom right has three fingers on one hand and only the top right image does everything I ask for. There are no cars in that image. But everything I showed you is not the full extent of MJ's capabilities. I'm sure you didn't know about the next one. Do you know those situations when you find a perfect photo of a panda online and you just cannot live without having the same image as an oil painting. No worries, because with MJ you can fix that. I found out that if I just copy and paste the link to the prompt and ask MJ to turn it into an oil painting, the result will be quite good. The strangest thing is that MJ doesn't really use the original picture, it analyzes it and then draws similar images. Look at the original photo of a panda and at these variations. They all have some similarity to the original photo, but none of them is a direct copy in another style. Maybe changing the style would help. So I will do the same thing, but ask for a Da Vinci sketch style. After waiting for a few seconds for the result, I once again see that the images are not really all that similar to the original photo, and they don't really look like the Da Vinci sketch. But no worries, this is MJ get used to it. MJ is not the most accurate out there, but the fact that it can analyze images is something new. So if you didn't know it was capable of this thing, hit the like button. I think it's time for us to get back to testing the capabilities of text generation because that's the most interesting part. For the next test, I will ask MJ to imagine a man in a dystopian city standing in front of a giant neon ad saying subscribe to AI master cyberpunk style. This seems like a pretty complicated request with a lot of moving parts, as they say. And you know what's strange about these results? The first generated photo is a straight up copy of the cyberpunk 2077 poster. It's basically identical. All the other images are also quite similar to that and don't really show what I asked for. And the reason for it is the type of quotes that I used. I did it on purpose to demonstrate that only one type of quote works in MJ. So I will slightly simplify the prompt and change the quotes to the correct ones. The new results look much better. All images are somewhat nice, but image number three in the bottom left corner looks the best. So with one click of a button, I will ask MJ to create a couple of variations of the same image. This took some time, but even these variations are still far from perfect. This time the top left photo looks best, so I will upscale the image creatively, which will give us this image. I think this one looks great. I like the style, the amount of detail, the colors, and the text itself is correct here, which again is not MJ's strong side. If that's not impressive enough for you, 
you now we can create comics with MJ. So to do this, I ask ChatGPT for a detailed prompt, which I'm gonna paste into MJ. This prompt is for a four panel comic page. Each panel is described in detail and three of them have some sort of text. The text blocks are quite long, so this will be a proper test for MJ and its capabilities. Let's look at those results. I can instantly say that these images are far from perfect. As you can see, some parts of the text are correctly generated, but others are crooked and weird, completely illegible. The artwork itself looks hella nice. However, MJ seems to struggle with numbers because in every image, the number of panels is different and surely isn't four. But image number one, in my opinion, looks the best. So I will just generate a couple of variations of that. After a few minutes of waiting, we get four more images. Among all these photos, the bottom right looks best. It has a very consistent style and looks super nice. However, even after upscaling it, the text is still legible. So I'd say that creating comics with MJ still requires you to manually type in all the text you want. This kind of defeats the whole purpose, but will do for a custom comics book as a present. From what I see, MJ V6 still needs additional polishing. For example, it would be nice to not use a special trigger in Discord to create images. I know there is a web version of MJ, but it takes time for it to get all the features that we can access through Discord. But don't you worry, MJ v6 is only in alpha now and it will get regular updates, further improving functionality. That's what the developers say and that's what we saw before. So I think in a few months, we will be able to see what it can really do. But maybe we just did everything wrong and used the incorrect prompt structure. The developers have released an official guide on writing prompts just one day before the update became Came public. So according to MJ developers, the perfect prompt looks like this. We start by introducing the style of the image. Next, we need to define the main focus of the image, like characteristics of the central subject, appearance, colors, and unique features. After that, we're supposed to establish the environment or context for the subject, including the location, time of day, weather, etc. When that's done, we should move on to providing composition details like viewpoint, angle, and framing. Next, we need to set the type of lighting and mood. After all that, we must describe additional details like secondary objects, characters, interactions, or their placement relative to the main subject. And if we do it like this, we should get perfect results. If you want me to test it out, hit the button and leave a comment. The MJ V6 update is really cool and I cannot wait to see all the incredible things it will be able to do after it gets fully rolled out. I think when that happens, it will be a perfect moment to compare it to Dolly 3 and Adobe Firefly and decide once and for all which AI image generator is the best. We already did that for the older versions of these generators, so be sure to check out that video too and See you there.